In custom car audio, we oftentimes will mount speakers in locations other than the doors for better performance. A lot of times we'll custom mount speakers in the A pillars of the vehicle, we might make custom door pods, or we might even make custom kick panels that fit down in the kick panel area of the vehicle. When installing into these custom locations, it's important to understand what path lengths are and how we can utilize them in order to create a better sounding system. Let's dive in and learn all about path lengths, how we can measure them, and why it's beneficial to use custom mounting locations for improved sound performance. Performance. Let's go. Hey guys, I'm Mark from Car Audio Fabrication, the show that helps you learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install your dream car audio system. In one of my previous videos, I went in depth into what a DSP or digital signal processor is. Now in that video, I explained how a DSP gives you control of time alignment of speakers. What's important to understand is when we're sitting in a vehicle, the speakers are different distances away from our listening position. So let's say we're sitting in a car and we're listening to a song where a female vocalist is singing. In the studio when the song was recorded, the woman's voice was recorded to center. In other words, her voice plays at the same time and at the same level on both the left and right side tracks of that song. Now I want you to imagine that you're sitting in a huge room. It's completely empty and the only things that are in there are you and two speakers. One of these speakers is about seven feet to your left and the other one is about seven feet to your right. What's important is both of these speakers are the exact same distance away from you. Now imagine that we start playing this song that the woman is singing. As you listen to both of these speakers, it's going to sound like the woman's voice is directly in front of you, right in the middle. What we've done here is we've created what's called a phantom image. Now I want you to imagine that we take that right side speaker and we move it five more feet away. What we've now done is we've changed the path length, or in other words, the length from the speaker to your listening position. So now the sound from that speaker is actually going to arrive at your ears slightly later and it's also going to be slightly quieter. What this does now is it moves that phantom center image. It's actually going to start to sound like it's coming more from another side. Her voice and the music and all the instruments are no longer going to sound like the original production of that track. So to combat this, we can use a digital signal processor. But when I mentioned this in a previous video, you guys made a great point down in the comments that I wanted to address. When we do time delay correction with the DSP, what I would actually do in this case where one speaker is further away from me is I would take the speaker that's closer to me and I would actually delay that signal so it's going to match when I hear the sound from that further speaker. The DSP will literally play that speaker that's closer to me fractions of a second later so that both sounds arrive at my ears at the same exact time. Now I can also adjust the level of that speaker that's further away to be slightly louder so it sounds at the same level as the one closer to me. But there's a problem with this, and that's that I've tuned only for my listening position in the vehicle. In other words, now if somebody's sitting in the passenger seat, it's not going to sound as good as sitting in the driver's seat. So this kind of boils down to a matter of preference. For me, I'm driving the vehicle all the time. I really rarely have a passenger. so. When I'm tuning, I really only care about my listening position. But most DSPs allow you to have multiple tunes within it that can be easily selected. So I also have a tune for when I do have a passenger in the vehicle that's tuned to more of a center listening position that's between both of us. So with that second tune that's tuned to the middle, it's not gonna sound perfect for the passenger or perfect for me, but at least it's gonna be really good for both of us rather than being perfect for me and only sounding mediocre for the passenger. So this poses a question. Is there a way to account for these different path differences within the vehicle and make them more consistent from the left speaker to the right speaker and from the passenger seat to the driver's seat? The answer is yes. We can do this by being aware of the path lengths. So by now you understand that the path length is simply the distance from the speaker to my listening position. If you want to build a vehicle that's excellent for sound quality, one of the first things you should do before you start building anything is determine the best mounting locations for speakers based on the path lengths, or more specifically, the path length 
differences. So first, let's take a look at doors and see whether they're kind of a bad choice for speaker location. To measure the distance, I'm simply using a tape measure and I measure to a marked location on the headrest. When I measure to the driver's door speaker, I get a distance of 43 inches and to the passenger, I get 58 inches. So if you subtract one of these dimensions from the other, that is a path length difference of 15 inches. Remember that number. 15 inches. Now let's measure the A-pillar mounting locations. Here I get 43 inches to the driver's side and 55 inches to the passenger side. That's a difference of 12 inches. When I measured at the passenger seat, this path difference was also the same. What's important here is that that 12 inches is actually less than 15 inches. So what that means is if we're not using a DSP and if we want to avoid any time alignment, the A-pillar speaker location is gonna be more accurate. This holds true for both the driver's side of the vehicle and the passenger side of the vehicle. Now let's take a look at the kick panel speaker location. And if you don't know, the kick panel is basically down by where your feet are to the sides of the car. Here for the driver's speaker, I get 54 inches, and for the passenger speaker, I get 64 inches for a difference of 10 inches, which is even better yet. So as you can see, measuring these different locations within the vehicle gives us an idea on what is the best speaker mounting location. In this case, the kick panel locations have the least path difference from side to side. There's a couple important things I wanna point out here though. This is different in every vehicle. In some vehicles, the A-pillars might have a shorter path difference length than the kick panels. Also something to consider though, for instance, in this vehicle, yes, the kick panel location had the shortest path difference length, but a lot of times your legs are in the way or part of the dash might be in the way from mounting in the kick panel. So in this case, I'm thinking the best option would be up in the A-pillars. Something else that's important to note is that path differences have the biggest impact on mid-range and tweeter speakers. Higher frequencies are much easier for us to localize, a lot more so than mid-bass or subwoofer bass frequencies. That's why we can get away with having a subwoofer pointed whatever direction in the vehicle because bass frequencies cannot be localized like that. They sound like they're coming from everywhere. If you enjoyed this video, if you could take a quick second to slam that like button, I'd really appreciate it. And if you could comment down below, even if it's just to tell me where in the world you're from, I would appreciate that. There's a ton of smart guys out there in the community that watch these videos and participate down in the comment section. So if you have questions, also feel free to post down below. Let's get a conversation going. If you'd like to see more sound quality related videos, be sure to check out my playlist here on screen and if you're new I would love to have you as a subscriber. As always a special thanks goes out to Brian, Eddie, Ali, Finchie, EJ, Rory, Truman, Emmanuel, and Jerry along with the rest of the Patreon support team. I'm actually trying to reach a new goal on Patreon which will help make it possible for me to make six videos per month so if you'd like to help me obtain that goal be sure to check that out down below as well. Or you can always show your support by rocking a sweet Car Audio Fabrication t-shirt. As always my dudes thank you for watching.